Today is my receiving day. This is very important. All of this, say it, is blood backed. 53rd chapter of Isaiah. And uh, verse four, surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we did ignorantly consider him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement needed to obtain peace and well-being was upon him. And with his stripes, we are wounded and we are healed. Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram, I am, I'm your shield and exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and no one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but you shall have come forth out of your own body shall you thine heir. And he besought him, he besought him for the broad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if you be able to number. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it unto righteousness. And he said unto him, I'm the God that brought thee out of, now, now let's come on down here. And he said to me, take a heifer three years old and a she goat of three years old, a ram three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon took these and divided them in the midst. Now, this is covenant thing. They were cut down the spine and they did this. Well, this, that, and there's blood then. And he divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram, and lo, a horror, a great darkness fell upon him. And he said to Abram, know the surety of your seed to be a stranger in the land of theirs and serve them, and they'll afflict them 400 years. And so the nation shall serve them, and I judge thee after shall come out of great substance and you shall go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the 18th verse, and the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed have I given this. Now, now he walked in that blood. And the, the ancient way to do it was to walk in a figure eight, which was infinity. That was the picture of circumcision. He hadn't been circumcised yet. That was in the 17th chapter. But he's walking in blood. And God is setting him up in the 17th chapter. Ha, ha, ha. Circumcision was introduced. The blood of animals, now he bled. 
And then he said he was fully persuaded. Uh, I'm 87. He was 100. Sweetheart, I don't know what kind of a tool they use to circumcise him. I don't even want to think about it. No, 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 I'm not going there. Well, I inquired of the Lord. I spent some time on this. And I said, why? Why circumcision? And in covenants, uh, for instance, David had a covenant mark with Jonathan. They cut their wrists and entered covenant. You can see that scar. And the Lord said, so that the only way you could tell he's in covenant with me, I made him rich. <clears throat> this is the reason that Jewish businessmen that follow the book, they become wealthy. If we follow the book, what have we been reading? It is God that gives you the power to get well. Amen. That's right. And of course, we're going to get there before we get done. Now then, today is my receiving day. Amen. Faith begins where the will of God is known. The word is our medicine. And I want to remind you again of some things that happened uh, with uh, Jerry and me and in different places. We, uh, we were there in Mark Tree and the barber offered a $1,000 for anyone that got heat. And he was just going up and down. And so he, and he was laughing and mocking me. And, and so there was a man there that went over and knocked on the door and Jerry answered. He said, are you Kenneth Copeland? He said, no, but I worked with him. And he said, why? And he said, that, that, that barber over there said, y'all pray for the sick. The barber didn't know he was witnessing. He said, my wife is really, really sick. Would you come with me and go pray for her? Jerry went, laid hands on her, and she was healed. And I'm just adding this, and got up and ministered to them. Well, and then we had a, 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 a girl healed of scoliosis of the spine. And uh, I said, is the doctor here? He said, I'm her doctor. And uh, so her mother took her in the, the ladies' room and she was completely, totally healed. Thank you, Jesus. Well, she applied for her $1,000. And he said, best two out of three. He didn't have a $1,000. So you can see where healing passed away, devil was working on him. Now, Gloria's grandmother, let's talk about her and Pop and uh, <laughs> sweet people. And so they, they came to uh, Fort Worth and she was at, came to Grace Temple where I was preaching. And afterwards, she said, Kenneth, you didn't mention water baptism one time. I said, Mom, there's a reason for that. She said, I'd like to know what it is. I said, everybody there had been baptized. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she said, what about James chapter 5? 
You believe that? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, no, you're calling on my elders. They don't believe anything. <laughs> she said, I've got really pain in my back. Would you and Gloria anoint me with oil? I said, yes, ma'am. So I anointed her with oil and Gloria to her prayer. She said, oh, 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 she said, I'm healed, I'm healed. Hallelujah. I said, mom, now you're obligated. Now you're gonna to have to go back and you're gonna to to have to testify that Jesus healed you Amen. on that scripture. Oh, she said, you wait like I get home. <laughs> well, her pastor told me, he said, Copeland, she sits on the front row. <laughs> well, that's a little small center point church, you know. And so she sits on the front row and she'll say, Pastor, you didn't read that correctly. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Now, Stanley, Gloria's youngest brother. Now, Missy was the youngest. And uh, when Gloria and I got married, uh, Maldair was pregnant with Missy. So we always know exactly how old Missy is. <laughs> she was at our wedding, but she hadn't been born yet. But Stanley, whew, on our prayer cabin, there's a rock chimney there at the back. And he had a scaffold set up there. And he had two buckets of mud He's a rock and brick mason. And he would climb up there with both of those. Doug and I were watching us. I said, Doug, I hope you got your licks in on your little brother. He said, I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. He said, look at him. Well, I bought him a dress shirt at Pop's home going. First thing he did is cut the sleeves out of it. <laughs> on kind of his arm. Now, there's a road right there close. I can, just, I can see it in my mind, and it's a sharp turn this way. But the way that road is set up, it doesn't lean this way. It, 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 it's more like this. Well, there are signs there that tell you how, what the speed will handle. Well, the young man that was driving didn't pay attention to it. And that truck went off the road and burned. So Gloria was at a conference and this woman was there giving her testimony. And she said, that she, she said, it was just amazing. She said, I, I was in heaven and, and the, when the Lord walked out on the platform, the, she said, the, the roof came undone and I realized it was angels. And when Jesus walked out there, the angels just did this. And she said, these long tables. She said, you know, the next thing is the rapture of the church, catching away of the church. And so she came to Gloria after it was over. She said, Gloria, I don't know this. She said, because I, I, of course I know who you are but, uh, and love your ministry. But she said, in these tables, there was, there was a young man there putting placemats down and said, he just turned around and walked over to me and said, would you tell Gloria I was not in that truck when it burned? She said, the funny thing about him, he was the only one that did not have sleeves in his garment. <laughs> we knew it was Stanley. We knew it was Stanley. So now, Matthew chapter 10.
Thank you, Jesus. And when he had called him 12 disciples, he gave them power or authority against unclean spirits to cast them out, heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, and the names of the apostles, and he names off the apostles. The 12 Jesus sent forth, and that included, that in, that included uh, Judas, Iscariot. Because they didn't, now Jesus knew, but the rest of them didn't, didn't know. The 12 said, well, go not into any way of the Gentiles, any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, the next one. <clears throat> Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor 12 stays. For the workman <clears throat> is worthy of his meat or his hire. So what, what did he do? You think they wore the same clothes three and a half years? Of course not. In other words, he said, I will provide for you. <clears throat> and if you, if, you, if you look at his sermons, you, you can see what he's talking about. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Yeah. That's, That's what he was teaching them. I don't want you to take what you made out of the fishing business. I don't want you to take that you are my disciples. You depend on me. Yes. And later in the book of Luke, he said, did you lack anything? They said, no, Lord, we lack nothing. Right. He is the great provider. Yes. Yes. He's the great physician. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now then. Well, let's look at it in the book of Luke chapter 10. It's worded a little differently. And that's uh, Luke 10 also. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70, sent them two by two before his face into every city where he himself would come. Therefore said he unto thee, the harvest is great, but laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways because I send you forth as lambs as wolves. I learned this from Kenneth e. Hagin. Father, in the name of Jesus, Send laborers across so-and-so's path with the word of their salvation, with the word of their healing, with the word of them suddenly being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord God, please don't let that person go to hell. Please, I just, I intercede for them. I intercede for them. I intercede for them. There was a, a woman that, she said, will you, my, she said, my, my, my dad, she said, I don't know whether he's saved or not. Would you go by the nursing home where he is? And so I did. And uh, this is while I was in Tulsa, or right, right after that. So she gave me the address and so forth, and I went over there. And she told him I was coming, and I was there promptly at the same time. And he came down the stairs and he did. He had this, this one bad arm. 
So I just turned over there. We just sat down. I turned over there to the book of Romans and read. And uh, he said, uh, thank you, Brother Coburn. He just got up and left. And I said, well, Lord, just have the ministering spirits continue what I said to him. Well, she contacted me. Now listen to this, because you can do the same thing. She said, he was afraid you were going to pray for him out there in the lobby. I said, well, he got it right. I was, I was planning to. But she said he got up to his room and he said, you know, what he read to me, he said, I, I believe in God, but I, I, just, I thought, well, I better get on my knees and pray that. Then he called her and just, he was so thrilled. He was born again, man. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. So I just wanted to touch on that for a moment. Let's go Yes. I I was preaching daily broadcast with Jerry and I think we should do this this morning. Just close your eyes. Now, just lean your head back a little bit and you're there at the foot of the cross. Right there with, the, with, with his mother Mary and you look up. Now go around behind the cross and look at those stripes and a little bit of that blood has dripped down on you. Because right there, my brother and sister, it was the day you were healed. That's when you were healed. Hallelujah. Now it's up to us to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Proverbs chapter four. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. And the cross reference says medicine. Now it's up to us to receive it. My name's Christy Soap and I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And uh, today when um, Kenneth Copeland was calling out healing about a meniscus. I had a tear a couple of years ago from a fall at work and I've been getting steroid shots. Well, I felt that my knee, when he called out a meniscus tear was healed, I knew it was me. And Nancy Dufresne had called out about pins in your body. And um, so I had gone up for that and to have I'm wanting those removed because of the way my leg rotates when I'm walking. Anyway, uh, I felt a difference. That, that happened two years ago when a pipe fell on my knee and they put two pins below my knee. Well, it feels great now and I know I'm healed. She's been getting steroid shots for two years and today there's no pain, no swelling and oh, she's healed. Oh, praise God. There might be some questions about healing that have come your way. Is it God's will for me to be healed? Who is the source behind all sickness and pain? Is healing for today? Find out what the Bible has to say about your healing in a powerful two resource package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries that will tell you the truth about your healing. In this package, you'll find a book by Gloria Copeland called God's Will for Your Healing and her mini book, Don't Buy the Lie. 
God always wills for you to be healed. See how throughout His Word, He demonstrates His covenant promise of healing to His people. From the first covenant to the second, God reveals Himself as healer. When Jesus defeated the curse, it included all sickness and disease. Learn how the Word is an incorruptible seed you plant in your heart that Satan cannot stop. Begin to take the Word like medicine, speak it out in faith, then act on it, and see for yourself God's will for your healing. Healing belongs to God's children. It belongs to you. Request the Truth About Healing package, also available as a digital download, free from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Learn the truth about healing direct from God's Word. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Period. Believe what that book says, not what your feelings say. Join us for the California Victory Campaign with Kenneth Copeland, November 14th through the 16th. Register at kcm.org slash ca today. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. The blessing of the Lord is God's life, healing and prosperity. James 1.17 tells us every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. That said, we know God is the source of everything good, and he's never the source of anything bad. It's through Jesus you can be healed and free from every sickness or disease because he's redeemed you from all the curse. He made it possible for you to live the life God has for you where you're strong, healthy, at peace, and full of joy. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to help you build your faith in God's Word. They have two books they want to send you free. One is called God's Will for Your Healing, and the other is Don't Buy the Lie. God's Word is clear. It is His perfect will for you to be well. It's time to discover or remind yourself the truth about your healing. Keep feeding your spirit with the Word of God until it comes out of you in faith. Go to kcm.org and select your free package as physical books or digital downloads. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. To learn more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith, Check out our website for free content and resources available to you on kcm.org.uk.